The danger isn't that someone wakes up and decides to start a war. The danger is that imperfect, stressed humans are trying to supervise ultra-fast machines in a noisy environment full of deception. You can't fix that with better hardware. You need doctrine, you need design, you need restraint. Which brings us to the next question. How do different states choose to design these systems? Once you see that machine speed feedback loops can spiral, the way nations design their drones and their rules of engagement becomes the heart of the story. Not all drone systems are created equal. Some states try to build robust systems. That means conservatives' rules of engagement embedded in software. Multiple layers of verification before lethal effects are triggered and clear off-ramps and circuit breakers when sensors disagree. Also a bias towards de-escalation under uncertainty. Other states may build looser systems with faster, more aggressive automated responses, a greater willingness to operate in gray zones and ambiguous airspace, and higher tolerance for collateral risk. And a doctrine that treats ambiguity as an opportunity rather than a red flag. On a different axis, some actors are technically competent, with good sensors, good comms, and well-trained operators. And others are crude, using hacked-together systems with poor discipline and bad situational awareness. I guess some smugglers, maybe. If you sketch that out, you get basically a two-by-two -two matrix. Robust and competent. For example, the US, the UK, France, Japan, Australia, and in many domains, Israel. Loose and competent. China in some areas, Russia in some of its areas. Robust and crude. Perhaps newer NATO drone users trying to behave responsibly with limited tech. And loose and crude, like militias, cartels, insurgent groups, and other non-state actors.